let's see i had oh uh just so you guys know i didn't read any of this yet the only thing i've seen is a picture of a vampire sitting so that's as much as i know about this update so far so i'll be going through this uh i'm sure some of you probably have seen this by now but uh, i haven't had a chance to review it so here i am Greetings, vampires. It's been a little while and we've missed you. While sheltering from the sun's relentless rays, we've been immersed in the arcane art of game development. Today, we'll be pulling back the curtain to reveal the intricate web we've been weaving for V Rising's nefarious future. As always, it's time to find the most lavish silken throne, command your minions to uncork that age old blood wine cask, and dive deep into the mysterious depths of Stunlock Studios' crypt. Illustrations from the update are top. Okay, good to know, Gurton. And welcome to the chat, by the way. Hope you're doing well today. Welcome back. Foundations for flourishing futures. If you're familiar with early earlier entries of our dev updates, which I am, you're aware that V Rising is built on a still in the works experimental engine, which enables us to achieve technological witchcraft that might seem impossible to many developers. Taking the gamble on this engine has been worthwhile, giving life to the immersive world of Ardoran that you have come to know and love us alongside us. However, with this system came its trade offs. One significant point was the inability to update the engine. What we were working on that is until now deep in our crypts over the course of many careful steps we have been upgrading our foundation with much more stable and well supported 1.0 version of the game engine it's no coincidence we're doing it right on time to pursue our own ambition of bringing v rising 1.0 to the next major update okay when they say major uh, when they say the engine are they talking about unity pretty sure they're talking about unity Hello, Spidey. How's it going? Hope you're doing well today. Uh, okay. We believe this change will allow us to overcome previous limitations with optimization and pave the way for a smoother game experience. Those of you who have been hoping to indulge it, the ungodly power of your rigs should finally be, uh, sorry, should finally be able to feel the unspeakable frames per second your eyes have gotten so used to. Furthermore, on the tech sorcery side, we're also refining our game development tools. This gives us an incredible advantage in testing and iterating on a level and gameplay design in a more organized, quick and efficient way. We hope this will help us speed up future development and bring you more of what you love faster. Okay. Sit back and watch us work. Okay. All right. Here comes the big one, V Rising 1.0. As we've stated, we are set on making this year's, uh, this next major update, our full release. Wait a second. As we've stated as, oh, I can't read. How's it going? It's going all right, Spidey. I was just saying that um, I haven't read this yet. I've only seen pictures and that was it. <laughs> As we've stated, we are set on making this major next major update our full release of V Rising, planned for the second quarter of 2024. While the tech team has been strengthening our support structure and programming end of things, our design and art teams have also been working hard shaping the coming release. So what does it mean for V Rising to be in its complete state? The full version of V Rising represents a fusion of our original vision from years past and the invaluable feedback driven enhancements and directions we've adopted over time it means a fully fleshed out and enticing journey through vardoran with a captivating beginning and a heart stopping finale it it's pushing forward with a complete vampire experience that we can stand behind with pride we also want you to understand that complete does not mean the ending I mean ending the game's development our journey with v rising continues as long as our players keep returning hungry for more there will be plenty of ways for us to bring more bloodshed decadence and terrifying vampire magic to the table beyond 1.0 speaking of which let's get into some of the fun stuff here's what we're looking at adding v rising the next major content patch like earlier previews this of course subject to change by no means a complete list of possibilities all right so 
I, something that I didn't realize is that it looks like they're looking to do one more major update and, you know, that'll be the final release. That's kind of surprising. I thought there was going to be two. It says here, we're set on making this major update our full release of the game. Plan for the second quarter. So, the second quarter of 2024, that's not till like... April, I think. That's a that's a long time away, actually. I think in May, it's possible. I don't. OK, that's kind of I thought there were going to be two updates. I thought there was going to be the one update and then the final release update. But I guess they're just doing one huge update, which. I mean, that's the thing. I do. I think there's going to be a server wipe. Maybe I, I don't. The thing is, I have to look at this. This is something I have to think about because I do run a server. But uh, let me read more carefully because I haven't seen any like I did a quick page search and I didn't see server wipe next to each other at all. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah, they might wipe again. But I, the thing is, I have to I have to see what those details in in uh, like basically bring. There's a chance that we won't have to, though, because the uh, the last time when we up when we did the update for Gloomrot. The reason why we had to do a server wipe is because they literally redrew the, redrew the whole map. I don't think they're going to uh, redraw the areas that are already redrawn, though. Let's see. Full release usually means final, exactly. Doesn't mean final, exactly. Most times it means taking the game out of early access. It means higher price and more stable version that, than what we have. Okay, yeah. That, that would make sense if that's true. If some core mechanics change, then it's inevitable. Well, it depends. I think the biggest pro the biggest problem is the terrain. If the terrain changes, then yeah, we're gonna have to do that. But I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, usually, when we have to server wipe, they tell us months beforehand. If we're looking at like second quarter twenty twenty four, we have quite some time before that. Rule of the Vampire. All right, I'm going to continue. Rule of the Vampire Realm. Before for the Zenith... Sorry, wow, before. Wow, I can't read. Holy shit. Prepare for the Zenith of your Vampire Saga. We're crafting an experience that feels like grand finale of an age-old legend, and naturally, such a grand tale requires a grander stage. The ground beneath your feet will expand even further, and once more, you'll feel the call of bloodshed bringing you to new places. That's right. We're, unve we're unveiling a brand new zone. It's time for to venture beyond hollowed mountains into dark and icy realms where history has been frozen and unseen treats await. History has been frozen. That's a really, that's a, that's probably a foreshadowing right here. Okay. Hello, Silver's really welcome to the chat. How are you doing today? Uh, let's see. Beautiful yet new lands to explore early concept of the new biome. Yeah. So this is the new zone for sure. Um, the zone that was like blacked out on the map. This is definitely it right here. It has to be because they just mentioned hollowed mountains. The only thing near that would be this zone. So I think that's pretty much confirmed. Curtin says recent example of it, Baldur's Gate 3. A few months ago, it was like a quarter of the price it has today. All because they were on early access and had a lot of stuff to implement. That's fair. That makes sense. So basically, if you want to get your friends to play uh, V Rising, probably do it now. <laughs> All right, let's see. Within this land, you'll find an untapped fraction faction of enemies. Faction. That's a really peculiar word they use there. Bosses to consume you. And of course, the ultimate rival, the final challenge. The throne of Ordurance, top predator awaits. Dare you seize it. Okay, what's going on with these pictures here? Huh. This looks really cool. Is this like Dracula's castle? This might be Dracula's castle, like the dark area in the center of the map where you can't really check it out and it's just you just see a bunch of debris and flying around and shit. That might be what this is, if I had to guess. I my guess is that this is Dracula uh Dracula's castle. And who knows, this might be Dracula himself right here. It does kind of look like a destroyed castle now that I look at it. The thing, well, the thing is, this is 
near the center of the map between uh, the Dunley Farmlands area and Gloomrot. So somewhere in there, it looks like. Um, these statues on the side, they look pretty cool. I really like these gargoyles. I wonder if these things are going to come to life and attack us during a fight. If we fight this guy. Well, when we fight this guy, because it basically says we're going to go after him, it looks like. So this is going to be, I feel like this fight is going to be really hard. I can, uh, I just have this vibe of, oh shit, we're going to get wrecked. Like, <laughs> it's probably going to be harder than Adam. If I had to guess, it kind of gives that vibe. The patch one, the 1.0 patch is centered on enriching the final chapters of your Vampire Chronicle, providing thrilling pursuits worthy of immense power you spent time collecting. It would be fun to share more about this now, but we might think, but it might be a bit more fun to save the finer details for later you know we love to tease yeah no shit <laughs> okay is this armor that we're getting we're getting dragoon armor is that what this is is this dragoon armor <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> it gives you royal guard vibes maybe that could be it too that could also be it i thought this was like outfits i thought this was like um I don't know. It it kind of looks to me like it's definitely having to do with vampires. Cause look at the bat wings on the on the armor. This is actually really interesting design. I kind of like this. I hope we get to wear this at some point. I hope that like when you defeat Dracula, you get this. <laughs> That'd be really cool. You don't know if it's for us. It says something around there about them being goons. We may have to fight against all right we'll see just some regular guys nothing to see here yeah okay mm -hmm. they kind of remind like especially this guy in the middle reminds me of a dragoon because of the helmet and the and the weapon it's kind of funny all right <laughs> and good looking and look good doing it okay cool we're also working on some sizzling cosmetic overhauls to quench your thirst for fashion Fuck yeah. All right. Originally, when designing V Rising, we had shied away from allowing players to customize their outfits because it felt important to be very clear about what gear another vampire was wearing when countering them in player versus player scenario. Since then, we added character level displays, which mitigate that concern considerably. While cosmetic variety took a backseat back then, it's roaring back into the limelight. Oh, OK. All right. Uh, don't hope we still get their armors. Yeah, I hope so too, Spidey. That uh, looks cool. Envision this, customizing your character's ensemble down to the last detail. We're brainstorming ways to craft varied outfits, experiment with vibrant color palettes, and potential dying techniques. Dying techniques. That's a big one, guys. Okay. And most importantly, grant you the freedom to personify your ideal vampire vibe. Okay. You can find yourself swaying gracefully in a lovely, noble garment at a friend's vampire masquerade or parading through Brighthaven in an ethereal gown, your scythe concealed, ready to surprise an unsuspecting paladin of light. They'll be too entranced by your elegance to anticipate the impending doom. Oh, God. That's really interesting how they mentioned that, the, uh... Uh... Masquerade or parading through Brighthaven in an ethereal gown. What does that mean? Are we going to get a dress? <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm curious. All right. These outfits look pretty cool. Male version looks great. Female version looks okay. I don't know. I could. I think that. um. I wonder why only one shoe has like this accent here, but the other shoe doesn't. That's kind of interesting. I wonder why. Hmm. All right. I kind of like these. They're kind of nice. I, I would I would have liked now. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but what I would have liked is maybe like a tailcoat. Um, we'll see. Uh, socks is wood. Walter, you told me it was a show of cue, but it was a person. Well, no, no, no. Uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 
Well, actually, by following, you've joined the queue, technically, and it's a queue to the underworld, so you're not wrong. See, more customization. See, maybe a new type of transformation to infiltrate? They need a top hat. Hell yeah. Well, actually, there's already a top hat in the game. The top hat in the game is actually pretty spiffy, if you ask me. <laughs> I would say... Um, I, I really, I don't know. I really like this. I'm curious to see what other outfits we're going to... Oh, and I just noticed we, we have two different colored gloves. They're not even symmetrical. So I wonder what's going on here. Like, is this just for like... I have questions. I have questions. It's really interesting, but it's it's nice. Hope they fixed the hair clipping. Oh my God. I think that's like another really... uh a highly requested feature is to not have hair clipping in the clothes, but we'll see. Uh, if I had to guess, I don't think we're going to see that. Uh, we're going to see an improvement to hair clipping, but it would be really nice if they did. All right, let's take a look at these. So it looks like these are the same outfit with different dyes. Okay, so this is the original. Okay, so it looks like the dyes don't just change the color of the outfits, but also the design of the outfit. That's kind of interesting. I like this green one a lot, and this red one's nice too. I Well, red's my favorite color, so I'm going to be a little biased here, but this, this green looks pretty nice. I like that a lot. Bringing an unfamiliar take to the familiar. Okay. That's Gloomrot, blah, 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 cosmetic options, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Keeping the grand designs under wraps. Your suggestions are... The heart blood of your darkest our darkest innovations. We want you to have the castle of your dreams, so tell us so tell us all of them. So you may want to sit down for this one, but oh wait, you can't sit in chairs and be rising. Yet. Alright guys, looks like we're gonna be able to sit. That's really exciting. I like the sitting uh position for the male vampire here. I wonder what the female's gonna look like. It's gonna be interesting. Uh I need the green, uh, Gerton says, I need the green one so bad. Because it's the reason people don't, oh, sorry, Spidey says, because it's the reason people don't bother with headgears aside from having no stat. Yeah, it's true. Spidey says, the meme getting real. It is. The meme is about to be gone. If we, if we're able to actually sit in game on a chair, the meme is gone. The meme is dead. And it'll be sad, but... It'll be the people like us who've been around since early access who will know the who will understand the meme. And I'm sure there's going to be some kind of references to that later, but we'll see. Checking things up. It's time to crank up the heat and delve into a more immersive experience. Here's where things are a bit spicier and a lot more experimental. Another significant revamp is on the horizon with the spell and progression unlocks. Oh, God, here we go. We've noticed. <laughs> We've noticed a recurring sentiment. V-Rising's gameplay can feel a little repetitive at multiple playthroughs, especially for your vampires who spend hundreds or even thousands of hours in Pardor. Okay, they're talking about me, guys. I'll just say that. I, I think I have like... I want to say I have like 1,300 hours on V-Rising or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Spell randomization. Oh, God. Blonde beard blanks. Welcome back to the chat. How are you doing? Uh, I say you always have access to the exact same arsenal at the exact same points in the game. While such linearity works wonders for tech progression, it dulls the magic for spell unlocks. You're essentially revisiting each stage with the Deja Vu toolkit. Moreover, late game spells and ultimates often get overshadowed and current dominance of merciless charge in the early mid game is a testament oh shit isn't that the werewolf ability isn't that the werewolf ultimate merciless charge i think that's what that is right i don't know i i don't use that ability i <laughs> i want to say it's the werewolf the werewolf dash but i'm not sure you feel called out it's quincy ult who uses quincy ult what the fuck? No, I'm kidding. I, I know there's people out there who use that, but I don't use Quincy Ult. What the hell? Uh, okay. Our solution. We're focusing on broadening spell accessibility 
early in the game, possibly separating the bond between learning specific spells and V-Bloods. This doesn't mean you'll lose the feeling of draining the power from your foes to add to your own, but instead looks to indulge that feeling in a way that's more flexible for gameplay. We're still figuring out the details, but it will include other advantages such as allowing us to be more free, uh, to more freely chase our inspirations to design V-Bloods without having to design a spell to fit them and vice versa. Okay, that makes sense. This change could mean more build variety at every stage of V-Rising, but it also allows us to add spells and V-Blood bosses whenever the creative thirst strikes. Yeah, that's good. Ooh, whatever route we take, or unlocking talents, fresh blood from new challengers is always a cherished ingredient. Okay. Why does this guy look like Silco? Does anyone, does anyone know what I'm talking about? He kind of reminds me of Silco a little bit. He got the build. He got the crazy eyes. I mean. <laughs> uh, I saw some mechanic like this on a mod spell reward. Was randomized. Oh, yeah. I mean... I don't see what like if people want to play that way i don't see a problem with it um linking the spells away from the bosses i can see that being a good thing in the long term but it's going to be really weird playing the game and being able to do things that i wouldn't normally at this level so at like low level so it's gonna be weird sickle as weapons would be nice forget the sickle i want a whip give me a whip damn it why is it that I fight enemies? And the thing is, they can't say there's no whip in the game because we, we've seen three, uh, sorry, two different types. We've seen the one that, uh, what's her name? Uh, what was her name? Dom uh, is it Domina or whatever? The lady who looks like um, Frankenstein's wife, but crazier with the BDSM theme and the scissor legs. Yeah, that lady, she has a whip. Dummy mama? No! Not dummy mama! No! Spidey! You need help over there? You want a morning star? That'd be cool. That'd be cool. I, 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 want, I want a whip. Why is it that the that, uh, enemies in the silver mines get whips, but I can't? What the fuck is that about? Give me my whip, damn it. I want it. I need it. <laughs> Actually, um, I'd also like to see the rapier. I, I'm not, I, I know that they're working on the rapier. I know that they're working on some like weird, like it, it looks, well, someone data mined it. Someone data mined and they were working on a, um, a rapier. They're working on a, uh, a, a bow that's not a crossbow, but a regular bow, I think. And they were also working on a crap. What was the other thing? Oh, it was like some weird, like spell thing, like some kind of magic weapon. I don't know what it was, but it was cool. You want whips to dominate? You know, that's fair. That's fair, Spidey. <laughs> Accurate description. <laughs> Tell me, Mama. I can't get over that. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> that's OK, though. Necro dagger. All right, let's continue. Twisting the tail. Last but not least, something you've clamored for is inching closer to reality. Live events. Live events? You mean like castle sieges or something? You mean like... Okay, let me read it. Let me read it. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. When you're reaching the apex of your vampire journey, you'll find a new area bustling with spontaneous happenings. Beckoning you out from your cozy castle for some tasty treats engage in alliances or face-offs with other vampires collecting valuable resources and bonuses crucial for the game's advanced stages these living events if all goes well could pave the way for dynamic events bursting to life all across for Doran while we're still fine-tuning the mechanics and determining what will make the cut for the 1.0 patch rest assured our focus is on making vardoran a more bright a more vibrant and unpredictable playground for the full release both for a pve and pvp okay so this is huge the fact that they specified this this makes me think that there might be separate kinds of events depending on the kind of server you have maybe i would like to i would like to see some kind of threat to my castle 
I wish they would try something at my castle. Y'all have seen what happens to the unsuspecting humans who walk in there. If this is coming into my castle, I might have to, uh, I might have to do something about this. What is this even going to be called? This, this reminds me of like a bat, but it looks like a, I don't know what this is. What is this, like a grasshopper kind of thing? I don't know what this is, man. It's kind of weird looking, but it's cool. I can only imagine what this thing sounds like in game. It's going to sound like, uh, oh my God. I, I, I don't even think I can make my voice sound like that, but <laughs> wing blade, wing blade, more like vampire Kha'Zix. Jesus Christ, this looks like a, I mean, oh, if this thing bites you, that's going to suck. That's kind of cool, though. I, I like this. And yes, whispers abound about weapon additions. Oh, OK, this is what I was talking about, though. Some savvy players have uncovered potential lead, potential leads, they say. And might think they've deciphered some clues. Be wary as not every hint is a revelation. OK, so they're going to they're not going to have all these. OK, there is, however, a specific weapon we're especially keen on one that's yet to be discovered by you clever bunch of. Sk skulkers. Brace yourselves for new weapons, a unique biome, new enemies and bosses, live event and see the live events is what I look forward to. I want to know what that's about. I wonder if there's going to be something in the. Uh, you know, the abandoned arena, the like the abandoned like Coliseum looking thing. I wonder if there's going to be an event there or even if there's just events around the map in general. Uh, they mentioned like, you know, a specific area. I'm not. I, I wonder if that's going to be in the new wintry area. I don't know. Caravans and random mob spawns or castle monster raids, perhaps. Yeah, I saw the caravans. I forgot to mention that the caravans, uh, they mentioned I want to say either last update or the I think like two updates ago, actually, they mentioned like these caravans that are supposedly allegedly going to be going across the map of Ar Vardoran. That could be a live event. That could be something um, or it could just be another mob, like a unique mob that you'll see in certain places. Uh, either way, it'd be kind of cool. Revamped spell mechanics, enhanced character customization and epic finale and more as V Rising unveils its grandeur in 2024. Stay tuned for more about this and other well-kept secrets in upcoming blogs. Okay, so this this here, be wary, not every hint is a, a revelation. I wonder which weapon they're talking about. And I wonder if the especially keen on weapon is a whip. I fucking hope it's a whip. I'm gonna be genuinely sad. Like I will, I will, Okay, maybe it depends on what it is, but if it's not a whip, I will be sad. Because <laughs> uh, a whip was not something that was data mine, which is why I was like, damn it, I wish we had a whip. But hey, they already made some of the. Um, uh, whatchamacallit, they've already made some of the. Uh, the animations for a whip. Yeah, data miners are not going to find it because the thing is, they've already said. Um, uh, one that's yet to be discovered by you clever bunch of skul skulkers. So if it's yet to be discovered, my question is, is that because it hasn't been data mined yet or is it because they haven't put it anywhere yet for it to be data mined in the first place? I am very curious to know. Um, I think the weapon that is least likely to make it out of the ones that we've seen is maybe the regular bow because we already have a crossbow and I don't really see the point of having a crossbow and like a regular bow. I mean, I, I just don't know. Like crossbows have more power to them, right? So what's the point of that? I don't know. All right. And then, of course, here's the end here. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Blah, 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 blah. Companions journey. Da, 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 da. And then a bunch of other random crap. Marketing team. All right. So takeaways from this update. Most exciting feature for me is sitting. Sitting is the most exciting feature. 
<laughs> the second most exciting feature is probably going to be the live events and then i'd say i put like the outfit dyeing like the color dyeing uh and these are cute by the way these are adorable i wish i had like one like a uh, like one of these is like a little printout of my vampire it'd be cool but uh i don't know i i don't know what to think of this i i think these are really promising i well in the previous update they talked more about like some of the stuff they're adding for like furniture items so i i wasn't expecting to see that here which we didn't get so um I was not expecting such a far out date though. Do I think the new engine still uses Unity? I have no idea. Um it would make okay, so so here's the thing. When Unity had its kerfuffle, right, earlier this month, I think it was like what, a week ago, two weeks ago. Um I was really concerned because this game runs on Unity currently. If the reason why, and then here's the thing, like on Twitter, I tagged Stunlock Studios and the V Rising peeps, and I was like, hey, um, are we going to talk about this? What's happening with Unity? You know, like what, what's the plan here? What's, what's going on, right? I find it really weird how like in this update, they didn't specify what game engine they're using. And the fact that they made a big deal about it and said that they had like this, like it's a big upgrade or blah, 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 blah. I wonder if they already transferred from Unity to another, um, to another game engine. And that's maybe why they didn't have an opinion on it. I don't know. Uh, well, not an official opinion, but yeah, they didn't, they didn't put out of an official opinion. And then, uh, Jeremy, um, I forgot his, I think his, I think his last name is Beerson. Jeremy Beerson, I think it's pronounced. He's the guy who does like the uh, social media stuff for, you know, uh, B Rising and like Sunrock and stuff like that. On the Discord, he uh, someone asked him like, hey, like, what's the plan with the Unity thing? And he said, um, you know, the, the situation is still unfolding, so uh, we don't have anything to say about it just yet. Now... Well, that was basically what he said, not word for word, but um, it was basically what he said. And I, I, I was a little concerned seeing that because I'm like, OK, well, your game is running on Unity. If this changes actually go through. Like. V Rising could literally potentially bankrupt your company, <laughs> so I don't understand. Um, but luckily, um, Unity had backed off. They backed the fuck up off of that bullshit right and the good thing about it is that when they backed off of it they basically said okay 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 only the people who upgrade to the new version of unity will have so basically who uh when whenever that whoever has like the newer versions of unity or whatever uh anyone who's currently using them they're fine but it's the new people using unity that are going to be subjected to those uh to certain changes and I think the changes are now like what two point. I think someone did the math. It was like two point five percent of revenue, or something like that, um, which is reasonable. I think it's similar. I think it's similar for like, uh, oh shit, what's the name of the other one? Unreal Engine. I think Unreal is similar or something like that. But I'm not like I'm not a developer. I don't you know I I don't work on games like that, so I can't really give an in-depth explanation of the whole situation uh if you're curious to know what the heck is going on with the unity situation just look up the thousands of videos that were posted on youtube about it because i i can't really explain it as well as other people um and i'm not going to sit here and pretend i know everything so if i had to guess one reason why why stunlock maybe did not come out and say anything about it could have been because they have already switched because they, the way that they uh, worded out, let's do, let's do a, let's see. The way that they worded it, V Rising, uh, v -Rising is built on a still in the works experimental engine. What does that mean? 
And what do they mean by, like, is, is Unity experimental? I thought it was already, like, open. Like, I thought it was out. It wasn't experimental. I thought it was a finished product. Um, so what this tells me is that they could be doing, they could have an in-house engine that they're working on. If they have an in-house engine that they're investing in to work on, that wouldn't necessarily surprise me, despite them being an indie dev, because remember, Stunlock, uh, I think the majority stakeholder in Stunlock is actually Tencent. So if Tencent has a big, you know, influence, or maybe not, well, I don't know if it would be influence, but if they have a, a major chunk of the company, I would assume that they could back that or fund that if they were trying to make a new ga uh, game engine in-house. So I, I really don't know. Most in, uh, Gerton says most indies today have begun developing in-house engines since a few years ago. Well, you know what? This whole Unity thing is exactly why. It ain't that crazy. OK, because I, I thought that like I thought that like having like uh, in-house game engines was like a very expensive process. I didn't realize that it was starting to become the norm, but I can kind of see that considering like the abuse that a lot of these companies have uh, done toward uh, a lot of indie devs and not even just indie devs, just devs in general. Um, so that's not, I guess that's not that surprising. 